Oh, let me pull up the chat. Um, no, I can shut the door actually. You good? Get back to this. You uh, the Zoom. We we we, we live, live right, right now. now. We live. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now, bro. I'm gonna cut up the sound. We live. All right. Uh, so what we got on today? Q and A. Oh man, yeah, man, yeah. Uh, but then you know, after the Q and A, I, I want you to just go ahead and uh, you know address the people with you know the the things that you feel like that they actually need to know, like what's on your mind. Um, <clears throat> one of the questions, well, I have several questions that's been asked for you. Uh, I think that this is coming from uh, brothers and sisters that's actually reading out of the holy tablets um, and various other different scrolls. So. I'm gonna jump right into it. So the first question is, um, one of the sisters wanted you to explain what is mitochondria DNA. Well, mitochondrial is the fuel source to uh, the DNA cell itself. They're not actually the same thing. We call it mitochondrial DNA, but it's not really DNA. It's its own individual uh, cell within a cell, so to speak. When we study the mitochondrial, the anatomy of the mitochondrial, we find that in there, there's a part called the matrix. The matrix okay. tied to the portal of life that we call the uterus. All right, in this portal of life, uh, creation of humanity is reduplicated in the womb of the woman. Every time a girl, a woman have a child, female have a child, that child went through the entire stages of human evolution in the womb. The mitochondrial is inherited from the motherland. The mother communicates to her child using mitochondrial to allow the child to develop instinct on a subconscious level. Now the um, um, the female that you, your mother pick for you is going to be able to communicate using your heart chakra and then the female will receive from your mother the mitochondrial control of the man. When this happens, mm -hmm. then the female has to gradually raise your mitochondrial output so that you can transform to a higher level of male called a divine masculine. A divine masculine is a man whose mitochondrial is turned up to the point where he's like totally creative, um, more, use more right brain abstract reasoning and things and he can see complex patterns clearly. Okay. Right? right. And the women can control mitochondrial most of them do it unconsciously. Right. And um, the mitochondrial is adjusted in the uh, male by how the uh, interaction is going with him and the female. And this is not race specific either. Right, because um, we know that mitochondrial DNA is passed on from mother to daughter. So, um, but Okay, so just to make some clarity on mitochondria DNA, why are we calling it mitochondria DNA if, if really the mitochondria is the cell? And that really makes sense because that is exactly what it is. It's, it's pretty much within inside of the cell. But why are we calling it mitochondria DNA? Well, you got to know what deoxyribonucleic acid is what DNA is. Right. right. It's a amino acid crystalline substance. And it doesn't work without the mitochondrial. So when they call it mitochondrial DNA, they attaching it to the, the DNA structure itself within the nucleus of the cell. They telling you that it's mitochondrial, but it 
alters or controls DNA. That's what the mitochondria will do. This is the whole purpose of relationships, um, developing balance in the relationship that you have with your partner so that you can control the energy. Because if that shit turn up um, and you haven't done your self work, it just makes you a worse motherfucker than you already was. Yeah. But if you did the self work when it turned up, it make you become something extraordinary for who you've been. So you're saying with the male, um, with, with the female mitochondria, um, or mitochondria in general between male and female, the balancement of like doing like shadow work is what balances the relationships. No, it's the well. It make the shadow work makes you capable of balancing your own relationships by finding your own personal balance. That's what the shadow work purpose is. Your shadow work is to make sure that you don't carry the seven deadly sins as part of your general makeup. So you right. want to forego the seven deadly sins, and what's the counterpart? Seven holy virtues. Right. So you you now that you know what when you know what they are then you can exchange the negative for the positive. That's called upgrade. Shadow work is dealing with all of that shit on the inside of you that you will see in other people you don't like, but you don't even realize that you do the same shit. Oh. That's okay. why I say judge not that she may not be judged for by the same measure which you judge by that measure also shall ye be judged. So whatever right. you condemn somebody else for or um, look down on somebody else for is going to be your cause of your own personal um, judgment. Because you judge right. yourself by how you judge others. Yeah. It's like you, you, you measure yourself up to those um, people. Mm -hmm. But More not people. realizing that... Uh, you can be very well just as guilty of doing the same things that you don't like in them. Yeah. Because yeah. you don't want to look, you want to look at everybody but yourself. Remember before I told you, I tell motherfuckers that's doing to, when they doing their self-work, if everywhere you go, you have a problem with somebody, it's only one common denominator. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, you know, you know. Okay. So yeah. if everywhere you go, you got a problem with somebody, you need to look at yourself. Hmm. You so, the only kind of denominator, the self. You said that, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. My, my, my granny you know, used to say that. fuck with you everywhere you go. <laughs> he said, you're the only motherfucker with you everywhere you go. So yeah, that's like my granny used to say, if everybody's saying the same thing about your boy, everybody can't be lying. Yeah. Because they can only tell them what they see in you, what you show. Motherfuckers think they know you, but they've just met you and spent no real quality time with you. That's because they heard you on the lecture. They think they know who you is now. No, no, you don't know who the fuck I am. <laughs> okay, so uh, here's another one. Um, can you explain in, in greater detail how the mitochondria DNA allow women to procreate without a male? It's not mitochondria alone. First of all, she had to be, she got to have what you call a three-point awakening. That's the uterus, the mitochondria, and she had to have raised her sacred secretion. If she haven't done those three things all together, she won't be able to spontaneously reproduce herself what we call parthogenesis. Right. But when she do, she can use her imagination to develop the child. We call it marking a child. When they say, don't say that around, why she pregnant around you, that might mark that baby. Right. Yeah, so what you say, what you do, mark the child. That's how you know what child is who. Hmm. You know, so it's um, the, the the mitochondria alone is not responsible for um, parthogenesis. There's more body parts going on in, in, than just that. It's it's a synchronization synchronization of key creative energy fields in the body. Right. So 
do you think that um, based on the science and technology that we have now, that that could actually um, help with those particular elements that goes into um, parthenogenesis for women that that may be possible again in this day and time? Look, the parthenogenesis, before you even think about that, you gotta control your menstrual cycle. If you can't willfully control your menstrual cycle, you can't reproduce a child. You're not ready to reproduce parthenogenically yet. And so what does the menstrual cycle have to do with it? No, it's not the menstrual cycle. It's the control. That's what I mean. What is the control of, um, my bad, what is the that, control of the menstrual cycle have to do with parthenogenesis? Because then you can you can pick your, uh, it's, a, it's about controlling the menstrual cycle is about understanding her body enough to know how to create in her own womb without any outside intervention. You got to learn to control. If we lay in tune with their uterus, they can turn that motherfucking shit on and off. But they don't know it because they taught that it's going to come every 28 days because it's been artificially induced by the sun. I mean, by the moon. The moon right. is to block out the Lilith energy. The Lilith energy is the old crone energy that gives the woman under the Lilith energy could control all aspects of herself. She could procreate parthogenically. She can go through life without a menstrual cycle until she's ready to have a child. The moon is artificially installed in the atmosphere. It replaced a massive meteor that was there that was a part of the earth. They moved that and put the moon there. The moon is not organic. It's not original. It's not natural. It's part right. of the hologram um with the dark night satellite so it's part of the maintenance of the three-dimensional framework okay okay so let's get on let's, let's talk about the reptilian agenda because i've been getting questions for you about that um okay. so when 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 the reptilian species is being spoken about is this allegorical, metaphorical, or is it literal? That's the first question that um, they wanted me to ask you. Okay, when they talking about reptilians, it's been exaggerated. The human is a reptile mammal hybrid. Right. Right, so we are already part reptilian. It's the only thing now is what percentage of reptilian and what will they come out to look like? Some of them really come out, um, they call it a condition ichthyosis. Right. When they come out. Yeah. With, yeah. There's reasons yeah, for that. that. Yeah. So and that enchondroplasia, the enchondroplasia where the where the damn fingers are, are wrapped around by more skin and they stuck together. <laughs> enchondroplasia is dwarfism. Okay. Um, that's different. Oh, okay. Okay, so, but you Go got ahead. another disease like heart citizen. Yeah, that's that hair. extra hairy shit. Yeah. <laughs> that's when you grow hair in very strange places right. or you see women that got too much testosterone and she growing a full damn beard. Mm -hmm. That comes from a species of now extinct hominid or we believe that they extinct, I'll put it that way, called Osterobustus. Right, I've heard of that. And then in, in Asia, it's called Giganthropithecus. Giganthropithecus. Okay, can you can you break that word down for the for the this, viewers, brother? Giganthropithecus means ancient giant human. They average to be eight feet tall. Their genetics is still in the human genome. It's just that they're not born in their original form in its totality because they've been high. Uh, uh, amalgamated out. A lot of the species that used to exist has been amalgamated out that were different species of hominids. Okay, so go ahead and finish explaining the reptilians. Like, how has it been exaggerated? Now, we know that the brain has a, a part in it called the Rx factor. Right, and I think that that's abbreviated for Rex, 
um, you know, symbolic of reptilian. And we understand that humans in the first stages in the mother's womb is in a reptilian state, and then they develop into, you know, Bermardians and all these other different species until they, you know, get turned human on the ninth month. But I think that what they're speaking about is the extraterrestrial involvement aspect of reptilians. Like, they want to know, are the reptilians actually physical, like humans, you know, looking different, like snakes, like <coughs> creatures that they're seeing? That's why I brought up ichthyosis. Because you have humans that look like reptiles. Gotcha. So we shouldn't be far-fetched that there would be a species of hominid coming from somewhere else that look lizard-like. Right. Right? So to us, they would be having the condition of ichthyosis, a severe case of ichthyosis. Okay. But they come from a place that's normal in their genome. <clears throat> So it's more genetically normal, basically. <coughs> um, the trait for, to, that, for that particular species. Right. The trait has to be a, a normal trait in order for us to classify them under a certain classification. Got you. So you got different beings that look like different types of reptiles and insects. They call insectoids. <clears throat> so, so now when we start speaking about the different beings such as like the Rumardians or the Greys, where do they fit in the scheme of this thing as far as like genetically? Is it that that's been exaggerated also and there's a way that we can relate to it more as humans or are, you know, are they from a specific star constellation? And genetically, they're just bred that way. What's your understanding on that? A lot of those, what we call grades, them in, they in suits. They look like a sign and when they take off the suit. But they probably more leaner from space travel causes the muscles to become leaner. So th that those, a lot of the people that see the big bug-eyed aliens, them helmets, they got on suits. They don't look like that. They look like they straight from motherfucker the sign. Or they look like Elijah Muhammad without the suit. Gotcha. I see exactly what you're saying. It's more that they have a, like you're not taking a picture or of them themselves. It's like taking a picture of an astronaut that has a space suit on, basically. Yeah, that exactly that. <laughs> but Bro. by us not by, by us not knowing. Who, what's going on, we have to rationalize in our mind what we see. When we give the description and they draw it, we got this big bug-eyed alien creature that don't look nothing like that, but it look exactly like the space suit he wearing. That makes all the sense in the world, too, because you can just give, uh, you can just give realistic examples of just, you know, fucking NASA. Mm-hmm. And, and stuff like that with the space travel. And the oh, suit. Not just NASA, not just space travel. The guy that goes to put on the deep sea diving suit. Yeah, I didn't even think of that part. Yeah. Imagine you ain't never ahead. seen the deep sea diving suit. You on the beach and a motherfucker come out the water with goggles on the snorkel on. Hey, we got the brother Rod Hayes in the building. I dropped this cash app in the uh, comment section. If y'all want to show the brother some love. He gonna drop it. We 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 going all the way in the day. Go ahead, brother. Finish. So you on the beach? You ain't never seen nobody in a wetsuit, and they ask you to describe them. You gonna describe them? They're mermaid. <laughs> from from the foot from the foot gear to the way they swimming. That makes sense. Yep. Yep. All that is all. Oh, like. Okay, so the Dogon talk about no more Amo coming out of the water. That's they right. They talk about Inky and Inana coming out the water. And they said they had on a fish suit, remember? Yep. The fish suit is, is, is for underwater uh, activities. They yeah, used like to he... use the skins of dolphins. To, and um, uh, beluga whales to make 
fish to make underwater suits. And you know, you know, you know what, bro? When you look at uh, when you look at those deep sea divers that be like in those animal theme parks and how they that be dealing with like the whales and the dolphins, those black suits resemble exactly what you're saying, as if it came from the skin of a whale. Mm-hmm. Cause that's what it, that's what they was using, right? And then they they was using uh, they skip this. They can make it airtight. You can make the suit airtight to the point where it fits your body like skin. You can either make it fit your body like skin, or you can store air in the suit because it's airtight to take underwater while you're swimming, and you will control your breathing. Um, to determine how you know how much farther you got to go underwater, right? So, let's talk about planet risk. Um, people want to know if risk is a hypothetical planet or a literal planet. I already posted that NASA already said they found the planet with the three signs and all that. Are I posted that shit last year. Um, they finally admit they they discovered Ritz, basically. They just didn't name it that. Now, 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 now I know that because I've seen a newspaper <coughs> article on it. I mm -hmm. actually seen a newspaper article on it, but um, the, these are the questions that the brothers and sisters that's been listening to you want to know because they kind of heavy into the Duabu doctrine or protocols or whatever. And you know, they 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 see you as the most knowledgeable right now on the platform. So I said, you know. I'm gonna go ahead and see when the brother got some time, and we are gonna go in. Hey, so look, now, I got, go ahead, bro. I got a new, I got a new Wabian brother in Detroit. Got a damn near photographic memory for this shit. That's what I used to study with. Okay, is there a lot of new Wabians out there in Detroit? Because I met some in the feds. Look, it's undercover new Wabians everywhere. The ones that don't tell you they knew Wabians, but they work in the office buildings downtown. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I know exactly. Got every Malachi about. book he ever wrote the, on their bookshelf. They around. You just don't know who they is because they ain't running around um, propagating the doctrine openly like that. They passing as functional um, retarded Americans. Sometimes that's best, especially when you're dealing with a, a, a way of life like ours because you become a target sometimes and people still got regular lives that they're trying to lead and, and fulfill their purpose in a whole different way. So I, so mm -hmm. I understand that. Um, so here, here's, here's another thing. When we start talking about the planet risk, right? Mm -hmm. And the space travel of the, the Riskians and the Anunnaki, um, where, who started calling them Riskians as opposed to the, the Sumerians calling them Anunnaki? Well, you got to remember in Arabic, uh, they call it Razak. Razaka is, Razaka is where the root word to risk is. That's right. It means to provide. Right. And when you calling them riskies, you just calling them providers, right? So if the if it was already in the language, it was already in use, because uh, to provide razak becomes the providers riskies, you know. But look, now we can sit here and have a, a risky in conversation. I don't got no problem with that. We can talk about the land mass, the water, all that shit. But I'm gonna tell you this. This is one of the major distractions for the human. We wanna know more about risk than we know about earth in order to, for us to be comfortable with understanding that risk is even there. I, I agree. With all of our problems on earth is earth problems that we gotta fix on earth. We can't go to risk to fix earth's problems. So if we wanna solve the problem, then we have to deal with what's on earth and what's in front of us. Don't get caught staring at the sky while a motherfucker in front of you coming to cut you down. You're right about that. 
Because that is right. a discussion. For a long time, man, I didn't talk about anything extraterrestrial because I believe that we don't even pay attention enough to what's going on Earth to even be concerned with what's happening in the stars. I don't talk about I don't talk about it, to be honest with you. I don't <laughs> even people don't even know what I know because I, I just let everybody else speak because I feel that from my perspective, there's so much that we need to do here. And, and, and we always, you know, we, we do get great leaders, don't get me wrong, but every time something happens with one of our leaders, it seems to knock us back and then it's like we have to start all over. So to me, extraterrestrial involvement in, in you know, different aspects, it's nothing wrong with it, but it's like, man, do you know, do you know how far we are from where we need to be based on the fact of where we stand right now? So I can't concentrate on that. I can talk about it, but it's only to satisfy a person's curiosity, like really what I'm doing now, to be able to ask you these questions that brothers and sisters want to know, when in reality, like you said, we, we got earth problems right here that we face every day. It ain't like we can get on a ship and just go to risk and start dealing with they shit because we ain't even dealing with our own. Now, exactly my point. So uh, when I a lot of times when I when they be asking me about outer space, the first thing I want to know: Have you read "State of Emergency" by Kawaza Kumjufu? They haven't read that. They ain't ready to be worried about risk, Nibiru, or none of that shit. They got Earth issues they need to tend to. I say everybody look like us need a copy of State of the Emergency. If I could afford it, I would make people be, be mandatory that everybody that look like us got one. Yeah. So there has been over the years, for the past, I would say about damn near 100 or more years, all of this talk on how the, the, the so-called secret society called the Illuminati has this effect on our life and the plot and plan to do all of these things, which we see it come to fruition, but um, I, I don't think that people um, generally have the right overstanding when it comes to the influence of this particular group. Can you expound on that? So the Bavarian Illuminati are out of Weishaupt operating in America as morals and dogmas of Albert Pike off of a treaty agreement by George Washington in Paris that wasn't even signed over here, right? So they control in the Americas and around the world. It's not a question of if it's there. It's how to get rid of them motherfuckers is the question. So that's what we've been really working on, how to get rid of them. Because we can trace them back all the way to, the, uh, to Mount Sion when they landed. You can, all you gotta do is match history books up with the story the Sumerians tell and, and the strategies of uh, the Anunnaki and you can weave history like a, a tapestry to show exactly what took place. So what would be the strategy to get rid of them? First, you had to identify them. We already did that. Once you got them identified, then you got to find out what they're doing so that you can undo it. We already did that with Noble Drew Ali. Now that you know what they're doing, you know who all of them are. Now you got to locate their geography and you have to infiltrate all of their uh, um, levels in order to be have some. You got to have a dog in every fight, basically. And having a dog in every fight entails you covering the same nine areas of people activity, economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war. You have to counter on every one of them fronts. <clears throat> That's so, how you start taking the community back, all the way back. <laughs> so when you say we've identified them, um, how would you explain to the people who are not really cognizant of still who they are? Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't explain it to them, truthfully speaking. We, we to the point now, if you can't see the stage show, 
there's no need of us really trying to explain anything to you. Because you're not even questioning the stage show that they making you look ridiculous with. They uh, literally having a live uh, uh, a live press conference and in the course of the live, the lady didn't change clothes two and three times and nobody don't notice. It. But it's supposed to be live. It's said right on the TV. See, so it's stuff like that. If they ain't ready, if they don't notice that shit and they're not questioning that kind of shit, then for to try to explain anything of a heavier informational significance is a waste of time. They haven't even got the basics down. So I wouldn't explain it to them. I let them catch the shock and awe and find out the hard way. <laughs> Tough love, huh? <laughs> so, okay, I'm, I, I think I got two more questions, then I'm gonna um, let you roll with it. The Luciferian conspiracy. What was that all about, in your words? The Luciferian conspiracy was the one drop of blood uh, that they needed to clean up the great debauchery as Bobby Hemmick called it. And um, the Lucifer, meaning the enlightened, the one that can see, the aware, the illuminated one, the one who's not diet woke, but fully woke. The illuminated one becomes a Luciferian by definition of the word. And the Luciferian conspiracy, conspiracy is an agreement that two or more people put together, they made an effort to accomplish the agreement. And to us, the agreement would be considered criminal. So for all of us who've been feeling the pains of this doctrine of white supremacy, which is a military laid out <laughs> strategy to, to dominate, conquer us, and make us forfeit our birthright. Um, that's the conspiracy, right? The one who can see the conspiracy um, is the one they classify as Lucifer. Any one of them. It don't, it's not an exclusive term to one individual. So when they use it in, in the Bible, oh, Lucifer, son of the morning, they ain't even talking to Lucifer. They talking to his mama. Because it say she was going to exalt her stars above the stars of heaven. What's the stars of heaven? The Orianos. So when you look at the sky, what's above Orion? Ursa. Ursa major, Ursa minor. We call it Big Dipper, Little Dipper. Right. Right? That's the only thing above. So whoever it is, mama bear and baby bear. <laughs> I'm a bear baby bear. Right? So who is the one they call the rebellious woman? Mary. What the fuck did she do? Right? She saw that it was fit for her to make one that could rival the rest of the guys without the need of the seed of the man, taking us back to the beginning, parthogenesis. Right. And the masculine conception. And she got to get permission from Earth for him to be an earthborn, she got to get a permission from prime creator to create the soul. Once she get them two creations, the only she got to do is use the power of will. We are so underestimating our own power of will, that's why we so freely give up our willpower to others to take control of. So, um, how, do, how do people learn to not you know, pretty much give up their willpower. Like, what, what, what would you suggest that they start doing? Do what you know is right, and um, don't change your mind just because somebody disagrees with you. That's when you surrender in your will. When you know that you shouldn't be sending your child to public school, but everybody else doing it, so you doing it. You giving your willpower to somebody else to use. Right. When you know your vote don't mean shit and you go down there and cast a goddamn survey. Right. So hoping you win something on a coupon. And you know that shit don't count. It's not a secret. The people don't elect. 
the president. Because they tell you they got to wait for the electoral vote, which is controlled by the electoral college. That's before right. The electoral, before the electoral college is seated, they know what all of their vote is before they even give them a seat. They know if they vote Democrat or Republican before they ever have polls for the people to go do their survey. And usually when they actually elect the person is because that person is already um, in the loop with them to be able to carry out whatever vision that they foresee or, you know, wherever the ball this, is rolling at that moment. Look, to even be a candidate, you're in the loop. But to determine the vote, the, the vote is determined by electors. Electors is the electoral college. The electoral college is the one seating the president. Who is these motherfuckers and where they come from? And why do they got to cast a vote separate from the popular vote when the popular vote should carry the state? Popular vote don't carry the state. The electoral vote carry the state. That's like some old socialist type of shit because that means the small majority, oh, excuse me, a, the small minority of people have more power than the great minority. Right, but here's the thing. <clears throat> You're going to find this statement in the history books and the statement says we must maintain the appearance of an adversarial system in order to maintain the system. Remember, most people don't know that it used to be the Democratic Republic Party and there was one party. Right. <clears throat> Most people don't know about the Whig Party. They don't know about the Commonwealth Party. They don't know about um, the Confederate Party was a legitimate party. They don't know about that stuff. So <coughs> when the master teacher, this is going to another uh, another bill. When, when the master teacher was teaching us about the Yamasee Native American um, Washita Creek Nation, um, and he was trying to get us involved in identifying ourselves with that particular school of thought. How does that relate to now and what we should be doing? So <clears throat> remember, Baba didn't just take us through one school of thought. That's right. We went through Islam, the three degrees, Islam, Judaism, Christianity. We went through the orders of Melchizedek. We went through our Egyptian orders. <clears throat> we went through our... Um, Nuwabi and Shrine orders. In order to put all of these orders together, he has to be a grand potentate, which means the one who creates the orders in order to raise the, the bland, deaf, and dumb. He got to be uh, authentic with it. You know. <clears throat> so going through a school of thought without taking a side, looking at it objectively gives you the ability to see what's really going on over here. So whatever school of thought he took us through, it was for us to see it so that when it come back up, we can recognize it. The, the way that they had us before, we was on one school of thought and one school of thought only. Go to school, go to church, get a good education, get a good job and die. That was it. Now we're looking at different ideas, expanding the mind. When the mind started to expand, once, once the motherfucker hears some shit that he didn't know before and he know it now, he can't unlearn that shit. Yeah. So all of the schools of thought was to give you an inside look from the outside of what's going on in the degree. He looking at it literally from what we call the third eye perspective as like remote viewing the structure, the layout, the cause and effect uh, potentialities within the order in order to teach you how to rise above. It. That's what this, that's what's the catalyst behind Nuwapu. You said that's so the catalyst behind Nuwabian? Behind Nuwapu. Mm. the sound right reason in science. You're going through all them different schools, but you remain a Nuwapian from, from the uh, 
uh, Nuwabian Hebrew, I mean, uh, the Islamic Hebrew, the Islamic, the Nubian Islamic Hebrews, through the Holy Tabernacle Ministries, through the Egyptian Church of Christ, all the way down, you still became, you still was a Nuwabian from start to finish. You was learning Nuwapu the whole time through all of those, but you was living the culture that they're trying to impose on you because you can feel that's not your culture. When you over here in Brooklyn, New York, and you trying to identify with a Saudi Arabian doctrine, right? Soon right. as you put on Jollibee and sandals in December, you automatically know this doesn't go to this land. This is a disconnect. <laughs> Hell yeah, I grew up in Brooklyn. I said it's cold as hell. Like, bro, we need a snorkel out this bitch and some Tim's. <laughs> Shit. Now look, you take an Eskimo out of Alaska to Saudi Arabia, that motherfucker not putting on none of his shit. He ain't putting that big furry ass coat, them big furry ass boots, or them big furry ass pants. He'd just be standing butt booty ass naked in Saudi Arabia. And he'll know right then, I can't be from here. This is a disconnect because I can't wear my gear. Mm. That's how they know where they belong on the land. The ones who belong in the warm climate to the cold climate. Nature already got us weeded out. We just ain't paying attention to how it's moving. These is what all of the degrees in the schools of thought that um, uh, Malachi sent us through. This is how you uh, use that to your advantage. All of the critical thinking you see me doing was inspired by the Nation of Islam, the Nuwabians, and um, the Moore Science Temple, and the um, Christian Church. This is where my original teachings stem from. Right. Right. But I had an organic teaching that was separate from all of that. We call it today the Vodun. I was studying the Vodun my entire life without even knowing I was studying it because you taught it by masters that can't tell you they're teaching it to you. Why is that? Because you have to be able to uh, have the right frequency in order to tie into your Orisha, or some people say your Loa, right? And then you have to make that um, you have to make that connection yourself as part of self discovery. Man, know thyself. It's part of your shadow work because you can't find you looking outside in the world, you can only find you inside of you because that's where you live at. Right. Right. So they can't tell you who you is. That's ego gratification. That's the ego development. But what they can do is they can give you a lesson that they're not telling you is a lesson that's part of the voodoo conjure for balancing out the laws of nature. I didn't understand half of that shit when I was a baby that I understand now when I look back on and I know why it stuck out in my memory when I, I'm dangling upside down here and my big mama say, look at here, Shelly. You look like you got the bearing. <laughs> right? <clears throat> I'm wondering why, I'm still remembering as a child why the fuck she got me upside down dangling me by my ankle. And I wasn't a year old. Wow. So from your perspective, what should we be doing now today? What is the things that you feel like we should be concentrating on now today? Separating from this system so this motherfucker can fall. Don't nothing else matter. Because until this system fall, it's going to make more and more suffering for the innocent when it do. And it's gonna make it longer to reboot the new, the new system. Right, it's like you're still stuck in the matrix. Yeah. So they still uh, tied to the paper chain of contract law. Remember, it tell you in the Christian doctrine that he didn't come to uh, free you from anything but the law. 
If you don't have no law, there is no sin. Paul talked about that shit with his half a fag ass. So separating from the system. So what's your perspective on people who, um, I'm gonna just say in the conscious community, I'm gonna narrow it down, even though you may have a perspective on the greater whole, but more so brothers and sisters that's in the conscious community that still support our children, the younger gods and goddesses going to be educated at the public school systems. What's the question though? I don't, I don't get the question. What What is your perspective on them still sending them to the same institutions, the same educational institutions that perpetuate the system? Those institutions are toxic environments and they also where they be watching your child to figure out who gonna get abducted next. <clears throat> if you're sending your child there, you ain't too sharp of what's going on. <clears throat> They're using that as a slave training system. <coughs> it's all Pavlovian response Skinner box training now. Oh shit, not the classic one operating conditioning. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's what it's I all about. I already Isn't know. I don't I don't had these conversations for years about uh Pavlovian um conditioning or what they may call classical conditioning. And then, you know, like you were saying about B.F. Skinner, he ended up refining it with the rat um, and, and, and creating or uh, pretty pretty much designing the operate conditioning techniques. Mm -hmm. So we, what about for the parents who feel like, hey, I'm not in the circumstance to be able to homeschool and there are no, there. They don't feel like there are enough Look, schools. This, this shit ain't that hard. Motherfuckers be trying to make it hard. It ain't that hard. All of the sisters that got jobs and that's working, this one sister that's not working, that's sitting at home on her ass eating buying bonds, watching soap operas, that could be helping teach the kids if y'all gave her a responsibility that she can handle. That's awesome, made up shit. We got every excuse to fail, but we find very few excuses to succeed. The, the justification of failure is in such abundance that the desire to succeed is so undermined that we would rather fall on the, um, the foolishness of the justification than strap on our motherfucking big boy panties or big girl panties, big boy drawers, and handle that. This shit isn't even hard as you think it is, but it's hard because you haven't tried it yet. You got to be able to make this motherfucking reality be into your will. That's how you know if you're using your willpower or somebody using your willpower. If your willpower got you sending your child somewhere else to get educated, you are giving your power away by giving your child away. You're undermining yourself without ever knowing you're undermining yourself. And you know, it's crazy that you say that because... I just had this conversation with a few sisters the other day, and um, th that was one of the main, uh, I'm gonna say excuses. How are you gonna send your child to school? When do you have time to, I mean, how are you gonna not send the children to school? When do you have time to uh, pretty much educate them if you gotta go out and work? Education is an ongoing process. Whether you work or not as the parent, it's your responsibility to educate them better than the system. The system is only training them to be a subject to the system. If you want them to rise up so they don't have to go through the shit you're doing, you make a way. They looking for excuses, man. All they, they looking for is they make a way for everything else. That's what I told them. Y'all make a way for everything else. They got time to sit in the motherfucking weave shop for eight hours getting that motherfucking weave weaved in there. Why you can't figure out how to get eight hours a week of actual teaching time to the child when you were sitting in the eight hour uh, um, uh, micro braid session, zillion session. I just seen yeah, girls have to go home, go to sleep, get up in the morning, come back for another eight hours to get them motherfucking zillions. That's crazy. I, I watch my um, my sisters and them go sit two, three, four hours just to get their nails and their feet done. 
Okay, so you got you if you can get your nails and your feet done, you can find time for your child. Look, all of the women that I personally know, even when their child not at school, they trying to teach them something or they trying to put them around somebody to teach them something. <clears throat> I don't know now. Okay, so go ahead, finish that thought, and I'm gonna read you what um I don't know what CPS is, but the brother of Matthew child protective Wayne. services. Huh? That's child protective services. Okay, child protective services. Now I grew up in homeschool and I just had this conversation with a few of the uh, women. It is not illegal to homeschool your children. You can sign your children out. I have done it. And you fill out the paperwork and they give you two options. Either you can sign them up for a homeschool program, whereas the program keeps up with the school system itself, or you can decide what books you want to teach the child and prepare the child for whatever test that the school has to, um, has, you know, um, or, uh, organized or created for them and get them up to speed with the test. But it's, we're not saying take them out of school and I am. no, 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 I'm not saying, let me, let me just finish. I'm, I'm not saying take them out of school and then go to jail because you're not doing the educational program period. Now that does that does happen because when one of my ex mates, when I took her son out of school, she didn't finish filling out the paperwork. So it was like he was still enrolled in school and he was missing days. But once when the paperwork got, um, cause he was autistic. Once when the paperwork got um, completed, I, I put together the same, pretty much the same school system that we had in the tab. And I was able to educate him in Wabic and, and bring him up to speed. When he finally went back to school, he graduated in a regular class and went to college. Mm -hmm. That's so, the reason they don't want you to homeschool. Look, this, the curriculum our 12th graders get here is like fifth or sixth grade in Japan. It's like seventh or eighth grade in Germany. Look, for those who want to do further investigation on the educational system, there's a lady named Charlotte Isserby on YouTube who was the director under the No Child Left Behind program of the Department of Education. And in study the educational system, they're telling you to send your child to. You have an inalienable right to educate your child and not participate in the system. They can't interfere with that right unless you agree to allow them to interfere. That's right. if you are sovereign. That's if you know who you are. If you don't know who you are, you better follow their rules to the letter till you figure this shit out. So, the, all right, so um, this, Person Ross seven seven seven, and shout out to V Money, while I come while I come my shoe to the brother. But it says, can we do a declaration to claim our organic rights to not deal with contracts? I took mine out. Listen, listen to the sentence. Read the sentence again. He says, can we do a declaration to claim a our declaration? To claim our organic rights to not deal with contracts. I, I took mine out. Okay, now, a declaration, you don't need, a sovereign doesn't need permission to make a declaration. That's the first thing you understand about no big guys and no little dudes. The government ain't bigger than you and you ain't bigger than the government. Right? The government here is to serve the needs of the people. There's nowhere in the needs of the people do you have to make a declaration as to who you is. That's all in the corporate structure of bookkeeping. If you don't know where, what, what lane you fall in, you can easily get trapped up. So in the oral tradition, because we got to use our traditions, our ways to overthrow their, their system. So an oral declaration in the public domain any social media platform is called an archivable format that has been um, already ruled on as a um, viable means for public 
uh, notice. So if you put public notice and you tell the motherfuckers you rescind all contracts and you exercising your sovereign rights and identify who you are as a sovereign and not your straw man. That's why I tell everybody when you go through stages of awakening, your name doesn't change. Because who you are is changing too. Every seven years, you got a whole different cellular makeup. And that's a whole lifetime for the past you. At seven years old, the you that was born is no longer here. But the new that's about to go into the next seven years has arrived. Right. So, so this says, uh, Monday for short say, uh, my declaration is what I say. Okay, so can you explain to the brothers and sisters the meaning of a sovereign and how that applies? Because I think that, you know, from my experience of speaking with people about it, it's misconstrued. It is. So um, remember, the Dred Scott case said we had no rights that a so-called white person um, is bound to respect. A white person in law is a free white person in law, meaning they are some kind of royal or no, noble class, right? If you are organic being, then you are not under anybody's jurisdiction that's not a, um, in agreement with your claim. The problem is the clans don't know who they are, so we can't um, come together like transformers fast enough. It's moving, but it's moving slow as hell. Hmm. So in the redemption manuals, um, how to become a secure party creditor, how does that relate in your um, perspective Okay, so in the redemption process as a secured party creditor, you are participating in action permission from a legal fiction, which is a corporation masquerading as a government to allow you to be an active agent on their behalf. That's what that is. You making a contract on a higher level. That's all. Is this that time the same going thing? into it knowingly and willfully. Because the inferior can never validate a superior's position. Okay. So you remain an imbecile in law, a dread sky slave, free fifth compromise, when you don't know that you're the one supposed to be telling the system how to work. You're supposed to get with a general consensus of like-minded individuals and make a public notice to the grievance and offer the solution. If the solution not available, you make it known that this is a fact-finding mission. Anybody got a solution to this grievance, feel free to solve the problem. You put it in the public domain, it becomes a standing declaration. So now the more of y'all do it or understand what's being done and make allegiance to be on one page, with restoring the air, the land, and the water, then you can break free from the legal fiction. You gotta exercise your superior right as an organic being to clean earth up. That's all. Once you understand that part, you don't need to understand that else because the rest of it gonna automatic. It's gonna go into automatic pilot mode in your psyche. You're gonna then begin to remember why you came here and who you are and how you're going to fix the problem from your part. Right. And that makes all the damn sense in the world. Um, so with that being said, um, another question is, what does, because a lot of people that I was in contact with a few years ago was, you know, on the sovereignty paperwork hard and they was relating it more to property ownership like land. How does that relate? How does, like, how does the property, owning property relate to being sovereign? The only people that own property in truth, see, you don't own property. You lease property. You're damn you right, because you got to still keep paying. Right, because <laughs> the property taxes is ensure that you continue to keep the lease up. 
So you got to find out who Holder in due course is. That's the that's what you need to be in order to be a landowner. If you're not Holder in due course, nobody has that deed because nobody can actually sell the land. They've been running the whole mortgage fraud for years, defrauding the people on how mortgages is done. They using your mortgage to take out massive loans in your name. And they already paid for the house, you did, with your signature. But we don't know this shit. We don't know, we don't know about all of the bills they passed to systematically allow their legal fiction to assume a superior jurisdiction. <coughs> And how can can you explain that? <laughs> Excuse me, come on. Look, look, crying, look, crying. Look, the government is masquerading as the government. In uh, 1776, when they had the so-called American Revolution, and a ceasefire was determined. The only people who had rightful ownership of land was organic people that was already here when the settlers came. The establishment of the United States under the Constitution the first time was a political move and it was an effort to unify forces to bear down on the Midwest for the Louisiana Purchase, all the setup. So they came with the second constitution in the blood of Crispus Atticus that was kept in the Washington Memorial because the blood of the righteous shall not be spilled in vain. And so they know that we're going to follow all of the rules in order to redeem the blood of the righteous. So once this is done, the artificial jurisdiction is then based on propaganda, right? So what did they do to propagandize the citizenry, right? Fourth of July celebrations. So now if we figure out what the Fourth of July is really celebrating, we can break free from the trap. Because the same way they came in is the same way they got to go out. So they took the set up a, a, a corporate merger of the Virginia company and the Northwest Trading Company, both slave trading companies that also traded in tobacco, um, furs, and um, other things before they merged to be the corporate um, intermediary government until the organic people of the land learned to run the government. Right. At which time they're supposed to revert automatically back to the jurisdiction of the tribes organic to the land. This is all about what the peace of, uh, treaty of peace and friendship was about. Right. You talking about between um, Sidi Abdullah Muhammad and uh, George Washington, correct? Yeah. OK, now this treaty is them watching over us to ensure that the parameters is kept, but they came in with a rogue group um, under the Rockefeller family and the Prescotts and the Bush family who <clears throat> began to take over the banking system of the country and the um, intelligence sector of the company. country. This is when they start rolling out their plan to bring in a new world order by covering a thousand points of light. A thousand points of light that they speaking about is a thousand chiefs that they had their eyes on across the land, then they were supposed to murder them all at the same time in a ritual format on July the 4th, 2019. Right. That's when the contract expired. The only way to stop it is we have to catch George Herbert Walker Bush, Obama, Bill Clinton, 
and um, G Dummy and Jeb in their dirt. The thousand points of light that George Bush was speaking about in the New World Order speech was literally a thousand chiefs across the land that they located to murder in a ritual. Wow. So All this is going to come ahead. out. It's going to come out when the um, CIA is exposed and the whole Bush plot is exposed. And it's called the Garden Plot. That's what the Garden Plot was all about. Rex 84, Operation Cable Cutter. All that shit was all about that. So the question becomes now, being as though we see that there is a concentrated effort to hinder us and, and it should have already been seen by the mass majority. Um, how do we protect ourselves from that? Is it just through knowledge alone? Do you know? And, and another question. Let's get here first. Why have we never formed a military? That's the key point. But we did. Y'all just don't know who the military is. Oh, okay. Okay. The FOI, the FOI is our military. They some bad motherfuckers. They would break your ass up too, bro. <laughs> not not only that though, they can mobilize bloods, crips, vice lords, BDs, BGs, GDs, uh, Latin kings, Latin counts. They can mobilize all of them from a position of respect from being everywhere in the community, in um, constant communication with these um, people. They got they the only the only people in our community that's everywhere we at that can reach all our people at a moment's notice as the nation of Islam. Nobody else has the reach into the depths of our community like that. And so we would consider them our uh, military, our military and our intelligence community. Hmm. So. Let's go here with it then, shit. While we at it, if that's the case, what would we actually, what can we expect from them? Nothing. As far as, huh? Nothing. You can expect that they're going to continue to try to sabotage us at every turn. That's the only thing you can expect from them. No, I'm talking about the, uh, the FOI. Oh, uh, They're going to be um, instrumental in everything. You look at it like this. If one of the chiefs rise up on the land and they need a stable foundation in which to launch an offensive, where would they look to to make an allegiance that can reach into all of our communities? Okay. They were, they were, there's nobody else that they could reach for but the Nation of Islam. Because nobody else has that reach. Only the FOI got that reach. In New York, a FOI can introduce me to the biggest five percenters, uh, the biggest people in Queensbridge, Brooklyn, the Bronx, Harlem. Uh, uh, the Fruit of Islam can walk you through all of them places unmolested to meet the biggest people around there with no resistance. Nobody else can't do that. They can do it in Chicago. They can do it in Atlanta. They can do it in Miami. They can do it in DC. They can do it in Los Angeles, San Francisco, San Diego. They can do it in Portland. Um, they can do it in Cleveland. They can do it in Jackson, Mississippi, Macomb, Mississippi. Everywhere they get, they got some FOI. The people know them personally. They the only reach that you can get they like everywhere. They like a blood supply to the community. They everywhere, like veins. They the only organization that's functional, that stood the test of time, and that has that reach. Nobody else has it. The FOI is the most critical um, organization in the in the community right now. Because while we having this conversation on social media, they boots on the ground having conversations face-to-face -face with people. So, you know, that, that, 
particular diplomatic um, approach, do you think that that's something that um, that we need to be doing with, you know, more larger figures that's, you know, more relative to our liberation? We don't know who those larger figures is. The only time we gonna know is when we know. But the thing is, the top is unified. It's the grassroots that need to understand what's taking place in order that it takes place. Or else they're going to get hit with the shock and awe. And then some of them is going to have, literally just going to have heart attack drop dead right there when they see what's going on. Because mm -hmm. people like me that's been telling them, they thought we was crazy at one point. Now they're starting to ask us, wait a minute, didn't you say that? Wasn't that what you was talking about? You making too much shit match up. How you doing that? That's where we at with it now. Them the questions they asking now. The people they were saying was crazy and had wrote off before, now they asking them, that information you told me two years ago, where'd you get that from? Because that shit happened just like you said. Yeah, Red that's crazy. State. What makes Hand you start to listen to us? Mm -hmm. what, what Hand really sight, Hand 2020. What makes our people not really listen to us like like motherfuckers got all day to just be making up shit and just, you know what I mean? Like, bro, niggas ain't got all day to just be making up shit. Right. Well, some of them want instant gratification. Cause oh, if they so gotta, gotta be and you gotta lay the whole puzzle out in front of them and put the pieces together one at a time so they can see the big picture. Or else they don't that's too much work. They don't want the work. They want somebody else to do the work. And then they want to come along and reap the benefit. They want to be part of the payout, but they don't want to be part of the struggle. Right. They, they, they don't want to put the work in, but they want to reap the rewards, basically. Yeah. They don't want the struggle, but they want the rewards. This, uh, the brother Ray said, what's the role of Farrakhan during this time? Farrakhan is the spokesperson right now. Um, until we see what's going on. All of our leaders is in Raven Rock. So it's, a lot of them, y'all don't even probably know they exist. But they was reorganizing and restructuring government. This is what's taking so long. And the people's awareness of what's taking place and the absurdities that they put in front of their face that they're not even noticing. So what is Raven Rock? That's uh, NORAD continuity of government right in the Cheyenne Mountains of Colorado. It's a transitional team from the old legal fiction that's closed now to the organic people of the land and how we're going to be dealing with people is going to be based on this council of elders um, that we were going to go, we're going to like use their advice and apply solutions to problems instead of just talking about them all the time. You got damn right, because that chick is old. Like, all that rhetoric. Like, bro, let's do something. Like, like stuff. Like, why the fuck is we sitting around? Like, let's do some, something. So, the, the last thing I wanted to get you to address is the big America. And what I mean by America is this particular land, you know, was built on the backs of our ancestors. And a lot of people feel like America should be ours, like not going back to Africa or, 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 or moving and planning to go somewhere else like, you know, like it was back in the days of uh, Marcus Garvey, but more so right here, right now, conquer this shit and um, make this ours. What is your perspective on that? First of all, I ain't from Africa. I'm from over here. Um. I might have some uh, African blood in my DNA through my fa fatherland, but <clears throat> I'm from over here. I'm organic to this land. And as far as us reclaiming the organic um, dominion of the land, this is what we doing. This is what the whole campaign I'm on right now is and forming the grassroots that the organic people is that Raven Rock, Colorado continuity of government reclaiming the kingdom for the righteous, which is us. 
Mm. That shit sounds so good. It sent chills through my body. <laughs> I'm with the shit, so you know. But that's just me. That they they tell me that I, I don't really need to propagate because they say I'm too militant. So I just teach language, man, and just keep you know keep it at that. But shit, Look, real, bro. Huh? I'm weird to tap the head off, shoot him between the eyes. I'm with all that shit. I'm with you know, when I say that. Listen. I'm giving motherfuckers the same amount of mercy they gave us, the same amount of respect they gave us, the same amount of compassion they gave us. Give them exactly what they gave us. That's it's crazy, fair. man, because when I say that, the elders get on me. <laughs> they like, oh, but hold look, up. <laughs> do the math. It's fair. They, they, they decided who we going to act. We just matching energy to balance this shit out. But when I say that, they get on me and be like, nah, man, what, what we promoting, brother, you can't be promoting. I was like, bro. <laughs> Listen. Oh, man. They get on my case for it. You know what the biggest concern of the elders is? Is we not going to recognize the real enemy? The motherfuckers that look like us that ain't us? Oh, that's the that's first motherfuckers that we got to clean up. What are you talking about? I'm, yeah. I'm on that hard. But they worrying that we ain't going to see them and we going to attack the cat's paw. Oh, no, nah, they ain't how that pose to go. You, you, we got to clean up. We got to clean up our own house before we go trying to clean up somebody else's house. You did? <laughs> Shit. You, you know what I learned a long time ago, man? I learned that because I studied so much shit after I came out of the tab. I wanted to have a more broader sense of other people's perspective of like world knowledge. And one thing I studied was all of the major revolutions, tribal wars, tribal leaders, you know, the culture of that, that, that they had before the war, during the war, after the war. And what I noticed is that the first thing everybody did was get everybody that was part of them and what looked like them either on board or out the fucking way. Everybody. I'm talking about from from Africa to Cuba to Brazil to all of these places, they, they, they united their people around what the agenda was. And those that wasn't with the agenda, yo, your ass is out of here. <laughs> your ass is definitely out of here, bro. So yeah, I don't take, understand how people take, can like, move. The, the Cuban refugee crisis. That was because Castro told him you either with us or against us. If you were against us, you can either leave or die. The same thing with the Arabs. The Arabs did the same thing. When, when, when ISIS was taking over Iraq, they was going through the neighborhoods and like, yo, all the men need to pledge their allegiance to, 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 to this mission. If you ain't trying to pledge allegiance to this mission, they wasn't only just telling them to leave, but they was like, you can't take nothing with you. You ain't taking nothing that belongs to Iraq nowhere else, nigga. Yeah. Get the fuck yeah. up out of here. ISIS was Obama, baby. Man, ISIS was some bad motherfuckers started by Zarqawi. They were some bad they, motherfuckers. They were was, was started by Barack Hussein Obama. Oh, yeah? Explain that to the people, man. A lot of people don't know that. He, uh, the United States government funded ISIS through the CIA by direction of Barack Obama. He even said it in a, a press conference. They was calling them ISIL as the CIA code name. Right. So what was their agenda to fund them? To make us think that we need to go fight a war over there so we won't pay attention to what's going on over here. It was misdirection. That deception shit, man. Yeah. Shit, I, had, I had enough of that shit for real. Remember what Sun Tzu said in the Art of War? When you near, make it appear that you far. Yeah, I read that book a thousand times too. And, and when you far away, make your forces seem like they near. Yeah, right. So what do that mean? And in, in, in present day military terminologies, that's called PSYOP, psychological operations, where they try to get you to think a certain kind of way so you don't be on point. Shit. So they making you look for the boogeyman in the Middle East. But the boogeyman right here. The boogeyman right fucking here. They call it problem, reaction, solution. They create a problem to get a reaction. And then now you go to them to offer a solution because you don't 
you know, see the people that don't have a third eye open, they don't really see how these particular people are orchestrating all of this shit. Yeah. So he Hegelian, Hegelian dialectic is what it's called. Say it again. Hegelian dialectic. Define that for the people. Pro that's what you said. Problem, reaction, solution. Oh, yeah. The false problem, flag reaction. attacks is to make the people get in an uproar to demand that you solve the problem. Then all you got to do is create the boogeyman to blame. 48 Laws of Power tell you create a boogeyman. Mm -hmm. Right? Use a cat's paw. 48 Laws of Power. So they doing this shit in real time and we ain't paying no attention because we got to go to work and our kids got a football game. Okay, Ray says, if the financial system will go under, should we pay back our debt, like credit cards, et cetera? Will our debt be forgiven? Credit card debt going to be erased. Credit cards is going to be done away with. Anything that's a credit-related system is going away. It's going to be cash and carry. Okay. Okay. The brother, um, well, I don't know if it's a brother or sister, but the name is Hemp Custo, says, what's the deal with the California Reparations Task Force? Smoke screen? Question mark. That's a distraction. Anything got to do with reparations is to keep you from wanting to get your real inheritance, which makes reparation look like pocket change. They don't want you going for the real money, so they throw some pennies on the floor for you to pick up to go buy some candy, and then they keep the money on the table. That's all that is, a distraction. Don't fall for that shit. <laughs> you worth more than they reparations is capable of paying. Right, because what's going to happen is they're going to dictate the amount that, that, that you should have. How the fuck are you going to tell me what I, should, what I should desire to have based on what you did to me and how I perceived it? Like, no, nah, that don't work Bro. that way. My thing is this, <clears throat> they told me that they stole our land. But every time I go somewhere, all I see is my land. So if they stole it, where the fuck they put it? <laughs> so if, 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 it's still here, if it's still here and I'm here, I got the jurisdiction to pull rank because this is my shit. Right. So I pull rank. So when the contract ended, instead of a thousand chiefs getting slaughtered, I just closed all their contracts. So, I just use, go ahead. I just use my understanding of civics in order to close their contracts out by exercising my status as pretender to the throne, crown prince of heaven on earth. So should we be trying to, you know, still do the paperwork with the sovereignty or no? Um, if you want to recontract with a dead entity, national look, nationality is a corporate status in law, the same as a citizen, the same as a straw man. All of that is governed under the international um uh, law codes called Uniform Commercial Codes and Admiralty and Maritime. We was, under, we was under Admiralty and Maritime jurisdiction under the salvage law because they said we crashed our land mass into their ship, the Plymouth, which was the Mayflower. Declared D.C. a crash site. So now that D.C. a crash site, they can exercise their jurisdiction by changing the motherfucking um, capital to the crash site. So now everybody going to fall under the jurisdiction of the legal fiction instead of falling under the tribal uh, confederacy. Okay. I see now. Like so, so let me ask you this. Let's say we just created a name. This is for the sake of argument. Um, with that being said, if we created a name for nationality, we would have to incorporate it based on the UCC to get it recognized, or how would that go? Okay, 
how do you get how do you get nationality papers and what are they nationality papers are permission papers you have to file with the system in order to get a nationality or to assert a nationality whatever system you operate in you are actually putting them on notice of your national status as a national, if you don't have a country that's saying they represent you and that you're paying their taxes or duty to that country, then you just a natural tie to air. So you, you need to be tied to a country. So that's why they rely on the Treaty of Peace and Friendship to tie them to a corporate entity that can represent their interests in the uniform commercial code or admiralty courts. All this time, the solution to the problem was to be delivered to an admiralty court, to the highest admiralty official. The highest, the, the only remaining emperor um, heir that's available in Saudi Arabia because they killed off all of the bloodlines or so they thought. So basically, if you don't have a land, you don't, you can't really get established as a nationality. You can, but it has no force. You can't enforce it. So if you look on the back of a Moorish American nationality card, it tells you that it's a citizen of the United States. Because that's who's supposed to enforce it. But they only enforcing your status as a national that's not tied to a nation. Because Morocco doesn't recognize us as citizens of Morocco, even under the nationality card. The nationality right. agreement doesn't work like that. Right, because people are claiming Moors um, nationality based on Morocco and Sidi Abdullah Muhammad, but you're really not from Morocco. Right. So what you're doing is you are divorcing one country to pledge allegiance to another country, which makes you become, in American law, you become what they call a... Uh, treason? <laughs> no, no, no. It's not, it's not called treason. It's called a... Dual citizenship? Trading with, you're trading with the enemy. It's under the Trading with the Enemies Act. Under the Trading with the Enemies Act, you're supposed to register yourself if you make an allegiance to a foreign jurisdiction. That's all it is. You registering as a um, foreign agent in America. But the, there's no force behind it. They, Morocco not coming over here with no ships to, go, to do no liberation shit for us. Because it's our shit. So until we figure out how to assert our jurisdiction and recover our shit, Morocco can't do anything. They hands tied by the very treaty that you using to make allegiance to Morocco, they hands tied. So basically it would all have to start right here. Yeah, it start with, with, with knowing who the fuck you is. Knowing that you are getting to the land because the land talks to us. Ask yourself why you live where you live at. And watch the answer that you because you can't lie to yourself. It's going to occur to you later on. Just offer yourself the question, why in the fuck am I at where I'm at? And then it's going to occur to you. When your higher self gets the answer, it's going to only bring you one answer. It's the right answer. So with that being said, family, we're going to go ahead and get out of here because i got to start the Nawabic class. If y'all want to sign up for the Nawabic classes, please uh, hit me up on Facebook. My um, Facebook name um, I'm going to include in the comment section. The brother Rod Hayes went in once again. Um, again, if y'all want to show the brother some love, I dropped this cash app in the uh, comment section. Um, I'm going to try to see if y'all got any questions before we get ready to get out of here. 
Hold on, what's this? Okay, Bryson Reed says, what type of skills will be necessary to acquire once we reclaim the land back and then transition back to living off the land and with nature? Um, shit. Every skill is going to be needed. It's just, what do you already know how to do? Because we're not going to have time to retrain you. So you got to know what you already capable of. And that's going to be the... um what skill you going to be asked to offer to the clan. Okay. Another question is, um, let me see. Uh, this brother Kareem says we're too separated. We can't have 100 people here. We can't have hundreds of people here and they're boycotting that solves nothing. We have to pick one entity and go hard at it. No, you just got to divorce yourself from this dead ass system and watch this motherfucker finish falling because it already been took over. Okay, and then the next one is. Okay, Christ the Great Silver Tree says we're in a galactical womb. The Redskins will be proof of this overstand. I, I don't know what that means. I don't know what it means either. Okay, and then the last one is, um, what is the red? Well, I know the Redskins are what you call Indians, but th this person, Supreme Consciousness, say we Nubian are also looking to see the Redskins. I don't. Okay, go on to the next thing then. Just, just, yeah, just say, what it it, it say what it said. Let's move on to the next one. Can you ask Rod about the indigenous people of the Caribbean? That's Brenda. What about the indigenous people of the Caribbean? You ain't watching. They already taking their shit back. Barbados not already snatched jurisdiction from the queen last year. Jamaica working on it now. I've been talking about the Caribbean. The islands was the, is the catalyst. Haiti is the only thing we got an issue with. They got an open war conjure, and that's why they're in poverty and suffering. Nobody don't want them to close the country. That's just making people suffer. It ain't, it, it's, it's not helping none. They don't want the, somebody, they're not letting them close the country. Okay, uh, Yonka seven twenty five says, "Would you act? Would you please ask him what about people that's on disability or social security? And do we have no? And do we stop paying mortgages? Um, your mortgage is going to get paid for you on the flip. Um, until we in power, we ain't in power, right? So, um." Your mortgage, the pe the elders and sons assistance, they're gonna get probably better assistance on the turnaround, right? And all of the elderly, they're gonna have um home renovators come to their home every five years. Once they get like 62, I think it is, every five years, they free for uh, it'll be a government um finance upgrade to their home to keep the home modern. All that shit for the uh, elders, everything is going to be upgraded, but we first got to watch this old system fall that everybody's scared to kill. <coughs> kill that evil shit. Another black, black says, why buy our land? <coughs> what? Why buy our land? Yeah. Because we don't know no better that we ain't buying shit. <laughs> and then the last one is Brenda again. She says, can you ask Rod how can I send him some books, please? <laughs> Tell her to inbox me on either um, Facebook or Instagram. He said inbox him on either Facebook or Instagram. Um, do you need his uh, information? He, she get it up there. 
let me know she's trying to send me some books and we'll take it from there. All right, he said, just let him know you're trying to send him some books and we'll take it from there. Christ says, is there any significance to the Scottish Rite and Prince Hall Masons joining up on the 7th before the Queen's death? Yeah, because the Prince Hall Masons took over the Scottish Rite because of the dirt they did. Now that I didn't know. Yeah, that the, the dirt came in, 32, the Scottish Rite, 32 degrees Scottish Rite. George Washington, um, Albert Pike. Blindsided us while we was in our uh, conjure war. All right, this is to the brother Ray. Um, I think he already explained that, but I'm gonna read it anyway. We will, will we have to pay our debts, AKA credit cards, et cetera, with this financial reset? You can do a rewind. He, he, I already taught, explained yeah, he, that. He, he, he already explained that. Uh, then it says, ask Rob why Manly P. Hall's The Secret Destiny of America said this was all pre-planned by Crest Priesthood. Because it's written in the, um, in the uh, morals and dogma, everything you see going on. So he read the plan. He sees it's obviously a plan. It's not an accident or it's not haphazard. Okay, well, we about to get out of here, man. I thank you, man, for taking out your time and explaining to the people. I know sometimes it could, you know, get a little bit um, stressful because, <laughs> shit, that's a lot. You're giving a lot of energy, brother. I, I appreciate you, man. I admire you a lot. Um, we have to do a part two. And, I, you know, because every time you do a live with me, that one live you did, that shit was, was shared so much and went to over 10,000 people. So all, every time I checked my comments section, all I saw was just questions. I, so I just narrowed it down. I'm like, I know damn well, bro. I ain't about to say for no five hours to answer all these damn questions. So let me, um, you know, go ahead and, and and just get the basic questions. But I appreciate your time. Again, we're trying to build this new lobby in school. So we, we dropped the cash app for Messiah al Makhdi inside of the comments section. Also, we're trying to get as many brothers and sisters, you know, that's interested in learning the Nuwabic language and running the class. I'm about to actually do another class on um, um, uh, Clubhouse from, from six to eight. And what we're going to do first is we're going to talk about the agenda, you know, what, what our agenda should be. And it, it's based a lot in part on what the brother Rod Hayes was saying. So with that being said, family, wado. All right, bro, we're going to get back up another time, man. All right. All right.